our people like is if you'd start, say and spell your name to start off with. My name is Sharon Cronin, S-H-A-R-O-N-C-R-O-N-I-N. Great. So Sharon, talk a little bit about um, your suggestions for working with families who are really eager to have their children learn English and less focused on maintaining their home language. Some of the families you may run into who come from backgrounds with languages other than English may not want to see their language involved in the program. Be patient. Give them some time and share with them the richness of possibilities when children have two languages. Let them know that one in every five jobs now in the United States requires the ability to speak another language and that that language the child has now is a resource not only for the child but for their family and actually it's a national resource. So let them see what other families are doing. Ensure them that you are going to teach English, that the children will learn English with you but that they'll learn it in an even stronger way if they have their home language developing and to, that they don't lose that home language. The richer they are in their home language, the stronger they'll be in their second language as they're learning English. And that will be an asset to the family to have a bilingual child. Now in high school, many high schools are counting that home language as meeting the requirement for uh, not world language or foreign language in high school. So these are all things you can share with families to let them know how valuable and how rich it is to have that home language. Fabulous. Okay. Fabulous. And then do you want to make other points about the maintaining the culture and the family connections and so forth with their home language? The potential loss of that? Yes. There are so many ways to solve problems in the world. And when you think about cultures, they're like textbooks of solving problems. They have answers of how to address something that may have happened in the community, something that might have happened with the child, something that might have happened in health. The more you can work with the traditional culture, the more you can work with the, the family stories, the more you can work with the cultural uh, rich background that people bring, the stronger your program will be and the more exciting it will be. You don't, it's great to have the standard books. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, great work resource for teaching language and for doing uh, small group times and, and circle times. But it's also very valuable to get those traditional stories, both that the families tell from their life experiences, but also what are the legends, what are the stories, what are the, the sayings and proverbs that they have in their culture. All of that is rich material for doing studies with the children for doing literacy development, for doing problem solving, and for doing cross-cultural and cultural competency development with young children. Great. Before we go on, maybe we should have you just do both of those little bits in Spanish. Okay. Just so we have that as a resource. So the first is about um, families who are reluctant to have their children speak anything other than English. Dentro de las familias que hablan idiomas que no sean inglés, Hay algunas familias que no van a querer usar su, su idioma uh, en el centro y con los niños. Hay que tener paciencia con esas familias. Pero hay que también dejarles saber lo que se puede ganar por tener dos idiomas. Pueden dejarles ver los éxitos que otros niños han tenido. Es bueno que sepan que ahora en los Estados Unidos, uno en cada cinco trabajos requiere la habilidad de hablar dos idiomas. Así que tener dos idiomas es algo que le va a servir bien al niño. También en algunas escuelas secundarias pueden llenar el requisito del idioma del mundo usando su propio idioma. Y eso también es algo que le va a servir al niño. Y hay que dejarles saber que Ahora en el mundo es importante hablar más que un solo idioma y dejarles saber también que ustedes en el centro van a enseñar inglés, que no van a tener ningún problema aprendiendo inglés. Al contrario, el más que puedan desarrollar su idioma, el mejor va a quedar el inglés, tanto en las áreas de lectoescritura como también en la habilidad de comunicar y entenderse entre otras personas. It's not a direct translation. Yeah, but that's that doesn't need to be. Okay. Yeah. So was that both parts or just okay? Ahora. Tener cultura es tener un recurso. Cuando las familias vienen al centro y no se sienten cómodos en compartir o, o tener 
su futuro presente, se pierde algo. Es como tener respuestas, ideas y soluciones a los problemas que se va a encontrar en la vida, tanto en áreas de salud como trabajando con familias o entre culturas. Las culturas tienen ricas ideas para vivir y queremos incluir a todas las culturas. Está bien tener los libros clásicos en inglés como Brown Bear, Brown Bear, ¿por qué no? Esos ayudan a enseñar inglés y idioma y lectura y escritura, pero también es importante compartir la historia tradicional, la, la cultura tradicional. Pueden ser uh, historias que tienen las familias de sus propias vidas o pueden tener leyendas que tienen de su cultura, de, de, en la historia. Todo eso uh, puede añadir, se puede añadir para hacer más rico el currículo y los estudios que hacen con los niños. Great. And then you want to talk a bit about a language plan. Yes. Okay. Many of the classrooms in... Voy empezando en nuevo. Yeah. Because it's just California. Okay. And there's a lot. <laughs> okay. When you're working in supporting the language backgrounds of all the children in your program, it's so helpful to have a language plan. And this plan would say, what are the goals that you have for language development in English, in a second language, possibly even a third language? And this language plan would also say how you organize language usage in the classroom. If it's a dual language classroom, will you be using a teacher-based model? Will you be using a time-based model for organizing language usage? In linguistic and culturally responsive classrooms, how are you going to work on supporting each and every language in the classroom. Well, first, it's important to know which are the languages spoken by children and families in the classroom, as well as the teachers. And then, in every language should have something in that classroom that represents it. You don't have to label everything in all six languages if you have six in your classroom, but you may label things somewhere in the room so that each language, the print of each language is present in the classroom. Similarly, there should be books that are in the language of every child's background uh, in that classroom. And you should also have books on print, uh, uh, where they can, uh, books on tape, where they can listen to those languages. Uh, that language plan is a good way to start. I don't like the way that one's coming out. Ah, cut! Okay. Uh, let's see. They're not all the language classrooms. Right. Oh, absolutely. Well, no, 